is it the same with all or most of young adult novels? Or is it really weird that up until now, like she has never thought of Mal in a sexual way? Good evening, everyone. Nine chapters into the second book of the Grishaverse trilogy, Siege and Storm. How am I faring? I cannot say I'm forcing myself into reading these chapters, but I'm not also on the line of very excited to know what's going to happen next. Of course, except for the beginning, because I came in expecting something like them fleeing all the time, maybe for like even half the book, because it has happened before in other books. But that wasn't the case, like maybe one chapter in and suddenly all the chaos began again, they were discovered and our dear Darkling was back. And still very respectful will and not one of those <laughs> afters to be seen. I respect the author because she respects the villain. That's my new motto. Uh, how do you feel about it? I don't know. The, all these chapters are very action-packed, filled with interesting characters. I give that to the story. People I can't pronounce their names. I really have to watch other YouTubers' video in order to find out because I'm mostly going on guessing. Like, is it Stormhound? I really love the way he's very cheeky and kind of funny, even though he's very irritating. But everything that is happening, the magic system, they're fine, really. Probably it has something to do with the fact that I've read tons of these kind of stories, but mostly with the fact that I finished the first draft to my first novel, and instead of feeling psyched, I feel numb. There's something probably wrong with me. Like, why can't I have that high of a happiness? Seriously. Like, something that is on my mind is, is it the same with all or most of young adult novels? Or is it really weird that up until now, like, she has never thought of Mal in a sexual way? Even her face doesn't get heated anymore when he's close to her, like... Seriously, I see no chemistry. In my opinion, she's really better off with this new prince, or even better, our dearest Darkling. I should stop here. That's all I'm thinking about. And certainly finally watching the trailer didn't help at all. Such an awesome actor for a dearest Darkling. God help, God help us help. all. Help. When will I finish this book? I don't know. You know, I would really hate to go into the series not knowing some of these characters. Though I might be wrong. I'm judging based on all those movies before that really sucked and were really unfair to the books. But, like, yesterday I finished watching Bridgerton. I had been waiting on this because I wanted to read the books first, but then I was like, oh God, you know what, forget about it, let's watch the series. And oh my god, it was really good. Like, I really doubt there could have been anything in the book that hadn't been fairly transformed in the series. I'm thinking that maybe in this series too, it's going to be a good experience as well. I'm a bit uncertain when I'm saying this because we've all seen those b movie adaptations that have been really horrible, even if they've performed really well in box office and have gathered fans from all over the world and have raised the sales of the book, but truly have been horrible to compare with what had actually happened in the book, the way the characters had originally been in the original story instead of the way they have been brutalized in order to be more female empowerment. And you know what I'm talking about. So I'm thinking now that I shouldn't be in such a rush. If the series come out, I'm going to watch, start watching it right away. But I'm going to continue reading. Like, I bought a book already. <laughs> like, what's the point in not reading it, you know? I finished Sage and Storm a couple of days ago. Like, before I talked about the first third of the book that I had read. And during the novel, I just couldn't bring myself to anticipate anything because I still believe 
a great injustice had been done to our dear darkling. So I, as, I seriously wasn't anticipating anything. I was just forcing myself to finish this book because I hate unfinished stuff and I cannot DNF. But I do confess that there were multiple moments during the novel, funny jabs, the sarcasm, in the way people were calling her a saint, like every time I, I just couldn't stop laughing. You know, the political relations, the seduction and all those subtle things, like I think they were all masterfully written and done, like perfect, perfect. They were probably also the part of the reason I just went on. But when I finished it, in a normal day, I would just put it aside and wait for maybe a month, a couple of months before moving on to read the third book. And based on what I've realized, my challenge shouldn't finish at the third book because I probably should also know what happens in Six of Crows and Crooked Kingdom. Three more books to go. But I didn't give myself that rest because of the bloody challenge. Now that I've watched the teasers and trailers and I've seen the cast, I'm just... I'm recently torn apart between binge reading the series or binge watching every movie Ben Barnes had been in. <laughs> I kind of, I'm insane. Like, this is out of the question. One thing I can also say, up until now, like after Shadow and Bowen and Siege and Storm, I can say that I am satisfied with the endings Lee Bardugo writes. I specifically remember reading this bestseller series where every single time the villain would do <laughs> at the end or you know those iconic Disney moments in the like ages ago when they would say no and they were just so unrealistic and so unrelatable and they were really really cruel to the villain I loved some of those books and I'm just probably never going to read them because I think the injustice that had been done to the villains was just so unforgivable. I did not see that here, but still, I wished for more darkling moments. Ever since the first book, we've always been with Alina, and she's always either escaping or hiding somewhere, and we don't get to see what's happening in the outside world. We just get the news. Right now, at the beginning of Ruin and Rising, she was kind of imprisoned for a while. I think the way she's not that connected to the world outside of the palace or right now the cathedral also makes me as a reader unconnected because sometimes it just brings out the depression in me. But I'm going to keep reading. At least for as long as the Darkling is alive because I know at some point he's going to die. I just can't bear the thought. It's just so cruel. Be attracted to the realm of story this much and understand him this much and just know that he's going to be doomed, either he or the protagonist. And most likely not the protagonist, which makes me wonder how the Rebel Diary anthology that Sasha Black has just made the contest is going to be like because the question behind the contest is what would happen if the villain was to win the day and are you tired of the knight in shining armors yes, yes. i'm i'm breaking 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 i just wish i could write short stories i just hate short stories so much i really wish i could like even the tiniest chance of participating in that great anthology just excites me but anyway i'm very excited to read that i will put the links in below so we can check them out and see if especially if you are very fond of writing short stories or if you haven't ever heard of sasha black's the rebel author podcast like what are you doing it's just so informative and so fun to listen to all these interviews from coolest people in the industry and not just the authors people from kobo or distributors there was this guest who was the person behind creating the languages for game of thrones and westward and all these cool series it's just such an awesome podcast it's one of my most favorite if not the most 
Anyway, I should probably stop blabbering. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Shahrzad and you were watching an episode on Shahrzad's Stories channel. See ya!